Morning, guys. Welcome back to another verbatim exercise. Let me just share our screen here. Share screen. Here we go. All right. As usual, this is a um, verbatim I received from one of my volunteers. Um, I'll read through it and then we will provide some feedback. Okay. Here we go. Hello, James. My name is Alison. I'm one of the chaplains here in the hospital. I come around and visit patients to say hello, see how they are, give them the opportunity to chat about anything. I'm sorry, but I don't believe in any of that stuff, you know, religion, so I have nothing to talk about. Well, that's okay. We don't have to talk about religion. I'm happy to talk about anything if you're up to it. When I was seven years old, my older brother died. Gosh, that must have been terrible for you and your family. Yes, it was. I used to be a Catholic and go to church back then, so I know about religion. My mother died two years later, so I chucked it all in. Never been to church again. Don't believe in it. Oh, that was just devastating for your mother to die. I can appreciate it would have been a very distressing and traumatic time for you. If you say so. I suppose it was. Well, I can certainly understand you've had a lot of trauma in your life. If you say so. The last 20 years of my life, I've spent part of every year in hospital, and here I am again. No idea how long I'm going to be here for this time. Well, that sounds like you've had a very tough time with your health. Yeah, if you say so. Well, I hope your health improves and that you find out when you're going home. Yep, we'll see what they say, have to say. Bye. Okay, take care, James. All right, so... Here's the feedback. I thought the introduction was pretty good. It's always important to clearly say who you are and the reason for your being there. Um, the patient responds, I'm sorry, but I don't believe in any of that stuff, you know, religion, so I have nothing to talk about. And the chaplain says, well, that's okay. We don't have to talk about religion. I'm happy to talk about anything if you're up for it. So this was a good response. Um, it wasn't argumentative and it's letting the patient know that chaplains are able to talk about anything a person likes to talk about. It doesn't have to be religious or spiritual in nature. Um, this response still allows space, space for the patient to determine if they're up for discussing anything at all, okay? So, or they can just dismiss the chaplain. So when the, when the person says, oh, I don't believe in that stuff, so I have nothing to talk about, the chaplain doesn't just say, okay, thanks, see ya, but just clarifies that we are there to talk about other things. Um, people are usually interested or passionate about something, and, if, and most people enjoy talking about that, and, and this is an opportunity. Um, hospitals can be very boring for patients, especially when they're not in pain at that time. Uh, there's not much else to do but lay in a hospital bed very little to watch on TV. Uh, they may have no visitors or few visitors. So the opportunity to kill 15 or 20 minutes talking about something you're interested in is always worthwhile offering to the patient. Patient responds, when I was seven years old, my older brother died. And the chaplain says, gosh, that must have been terrible for you and your family. So isn't this interesting in P2, the patient decides to continue the conversation, okay, but does so in a dramatic fashion. He launches straight into a very meaningful event in his life, which was the death of an older brother, at an age when he was only seven. So that would have been very traumatic, uh, would have created a very strong impression on him, would have dealt a real blow to his, his little heart and would have been struggling to make sense of, of death and, and what it means to lose a brother, you know. But after this patient has already said to the chaplain, I'm, I don't want to talk about anything at all because I don't believe in religion, and he's given an opportunity to talk about anything he likes, he brings this up. So it's almost as if the patient was trying to shock the chaplain, almost as though he was saying, okay, you'll talk about other things, will you? We'll try this on for size. OK, and here the chaplain responds well, but you've, you've always got to be careful when you're using a word like must. OK, it's a reasonable guess in this case, of course, because when you're seven years old and you if the family pet dies, it can be a traumatic thing. It can be terrible for you. 
uh, it can be heartbreaking. So to lose an older brother, it's a reasonable guess that this would have been terrible for you and your family. So in this case, the chaplain's going to get away with it. But just always be careful. You know, there's been times I've said to people, wow, you must be angry. And they'll say, no, I'm not angry. I'm more, more sad than anything. So just, just watch with being very definite in how you think someone feels, okay? Here the patient agrees, yes, it was. And he goes on to explain, I used to be a Catholic and go to church back then, so I know about religion. My mother died two years later, so I chucked it all in. Never been to church again. Don't believe in it. Chaplain responds, oh, that was just devastating for your mother to die. I can appreciate it would have been very distressing and traumatic time for you. Again, very reasonable response. I like here how the chaplain allows this silent period. Um, she doesn't just jump in and, and say, oh, I'm a Catholic or, you know, anything like that, but just stays quiet and allows this guy to just be processing his thoughts and feelings about, you know, what has happened in his younger days. So I thought this was quite a, a nice response. Um, yeah. His response to that response. So again, she says, that must have been devastating for your mother to die. I can appreciate it would have been a very distressing and traumatic time for you. He responds, if you say so. I suppose it was. Yeah, it, obviously that's a reasonable thing. Um, again, we have to be careful. Um, but again, I think his response before demonstrates that it was devastating and traumatic. However, as we don't know. She may have been a terrible mother and her death might have been the answer to his prayers. So we have to be careful about sounding certain about how they feel um, in relationship to their own losses that they've suffered. And that's why so often in our responses, we will start a response with, it sounds like, or it seems. It sounds like that must have been a very traumatic time for you and your family. It's just a bit more respectful. It's a bit more gentle, okay? For me, I would have addressed the comment, never been to church again, I don't believe in it. He's mentioned this twice. So responding to those comments, something like, it sounds like it's hard to believe in a God who would treat you like that. Or if that is how God treats his friends and followers, no wonder he has so few. Or hard to believe in a loving God when he's taken so much from you. This type of response would have acknowledged the comments about religion and um, it would have given him permission to unpack his current relationship with God. I mean, his current relationship sounds like it's just been closed, it's finished. But I don't know if that's true because he's brought this thing up twice. The chaplain didn't bring it up, he brought it up. So to me, it's almost like he wants to talk about this, okay? And when he says, I suppose it was, I might have responded, well, are you able to say more about what it was like for you at nine years of age? You know, give him an opportunity to talk about that. So when I say the loss of your mother must have been devastating and traumatic, and if he says, well, if you say so, I might say, well, how would you describe it? What would you say about it? You know, Um if it's different to what I'm saying, distressing and traumatic, well, what words would you use? You know, again, I'm just giving him the opportunity to talk about it if he chooses. This is all up to him. My life goes on whether he talks about it or not, but I'm trying to give him the opportunity to discuss these things. There's not a lot of opportunities in life where the average person feels it's okay to talk about their thoughts and feelings regarding God or talk about the death of loved ones so often we keep that stuff inside we we tend not to discuss that stuff you know the old saying we don't discuss you know religion or politics because we're just going to get into arguments with people um and so here it's it's very unique he's in a hospital situation he hasn't got anything else to be doing here's a chaplain talking to him i want to give him the opportunity if he'd like to talk about some of these things. If he chooses not to, that's fine. I go on with my day. 
But I want to give him the opportunity to say, you know, now is a safe time to talk about this stuff if you'd like to. This chaplain says, I can certainly understand how you've had a lot of trauma in your life. And he responds again with, if you say so. Then he's silent. Then he says, the last 20 years of my life, I've spent part of every year in hospital. And here I am again. No idea how long I'll be here for this time. So we see what the chaplain's response in C5. Perhaps another word other than trauma. Perhaps heartbreak or sadness, only because she's used trauma before. Okay. And again, isn't it interesting? He started with, if you say so, you know, and, and it almost sounds to me like it's very possible that he's been avoiding these deep, powerful feelings for most of his life. So he may not be 100% sure how he feels about it or what it means to him. I do think it's an interesting response. That's the third time he said so, you know. So, again, I, I've said here, um, you know, he's not sure how he feels, what it means to him. He then shares that for the last 20 years, he spent time each time each year in hospital. I mean, that's horrible. People coming to hospital once in many years is a horrible thing. No one likes to go to hospital. So to come for some part of each year for 20 years sounds like torture to me. It would be so frustrating. Whatever's going on, the doctors can't fix me. Um, there's this chronic illness, chronic pain. Terrible, terrible life um, where each year you have to come to the hospital for 20 years. So, you know, let's see how the chaplain goes with that. She says, that sounds like you've had a very tough time with your health. Well, that's to put it mildly. Um, it's, it's again, it's, it's a very simple, straightforward response. She's showing that she's listening. She's showing that she heard. It's a very simplistic response, but that's, but that's okay. Right, that's okay. He responds, yeah, if you say so. So again, this response, if you say so. So that's always, that's interesting. I guess my feedback for what the chaplain said is C6 is um, try and avoid words like hard, tough, or rough, and use feeling words. Like for me, coming to hospital for some part of each year for 20 years would be miserable, it would be overwhelming, frustrating, exhausting, fatiguing, something like that. Um, and and as, as you see here, if, if the third time he says, well, if you say so, I probably would have responded this way after the first time, but at least after the third time, I'd be saying, well, how would you describe it? What words would you use? You know, it, it doesn't sound like, you're sold on the words I'm using. So what words would you use? You see? The chaplain then says, well, I hope your, your health improves and that you find out when you'll be going home. He says, yeah, we'll see what they have to say. Goodbye. And she says, take care, uh, James. So for me, this was a just in the reading of the verbatim, this was like pulling the ejector seat lever. She was just had enough of this conversation in the sense She's trying to connect with James. She's trying to be there. She's trying to be respectful and listen to him. And she is. And he's not really giving her much at all. Um, and I think that she had had enough of trying to reach James and just pulled the pin on this conversation. It's a very quick exit, you know. So this was my feedback here. I said, I think this man was very hurt and angry at what God has allowed to happen to him in his life, up to and including his present health issues. I don't think that was a reason to cut the conversation short, okay? I think you just need to trust your intuition and say something like, it sounds like you blame God for all the bad stuff that's happened to you in your life, or something like that. My intuition tells me that he's looking for a way back to the church, back to a relationship with God. It's like a spouse that has been cheated on. They don't want the relationship to end, but they're so hurt and brokenhearted that things can't go back the way they were. They're hurt 
and it's going to take a lot of healing and time to get the relationship back on track. But they still want the relationship. He is just struggling with everything the Bible and the church says about God and how his experience doesn't match up with that. You see, he says, I know about religion. I know about the Catholic Church. But what he has heard about God doesn't equal what's happened in his life. For him, God is a God who takes and gives very little. And if you don't want to be in a relationship like that, because you feel like God's been unfair or he's been cruel to you, then he punishes you with illness because you've given up on that relationship that you don't want to be a part of because you don't understand how an all-powerful, almighty, all-loving God takes these very special people out of your life and allows such suffering. These are, this is a question that's echoed down through you know, the centuries. Men have always struggled with this question, you know, and it sounds like James is struggling too. To me, it's it. To me, my intuition says it's not that James doesn't want to be in a relationship with God. He does, but not the God that he understands. Not this God who's just all loving and kind, and yet allows this stuff to happen, you know. So. The volunteer shared with me that when she left this conversation. She felt like she'd failed the man. And so I responded to her, you know, in my opinion, you didn't let this man down. But that's a feeling that you need to sit with and ask yourself, why do I feel that way when I listened and I was very respectful for this man? What else could I have done? I mean, this was a conversation which would have, would have been very easy to ask a lot of questions and to be very curious. Wow, what happened to your brother? What what did your mum die of? You know, what illness do you have? What's wrong with you that you have to keep coming back to hospital? This was a question, this was a, a verbatim, a conversation where the chaplain really could have just let the reins go on the horse and ask all the questions, just let all her curiosity out, share her own experiences, offer her own advice. And she did none of that. She contained all of that stuff and just listened and tried to connect with this man, you see? So I said, remember, our, our role is to listen and strive to understand, full stop. And I said to her, I know that you know that you can't fix this man, and yet you seem to blame yourself for not having a way to open him up. He chose to respond the way he responded. He had an opportunity, and he may have responded to me exactly the same way. I might have said to him, it sounds like God stole so much from you. And he may have replied, if you say so. You see? Next time, and there will be a next time when it sounds like someone's blaming God for what's happened in their life, then ask them, tell me more about this God who doesn't always seem to act so loving. Or it sounds like God gets the blame for everything. Or wouldn't it be great if God answered all our prayers? Something like this because it provides an opportunity for someone to open up and vent about their understanding of God and what's happened in their life, because they're not going to get too many opportunities in life to do this with, you see. So like I said, I thought the chaplain did very well here. I thought it was definitely a conversation that could have been handled very differently and very poorly by someone less trained. Like I said, not only the questions, not only the shared experiences or the advice, but what about, you know, jumping to the defense of God? It sounds like you're blaming God for these things. God doesn't do these things in your life. No, she didn't do any of that, which is wonderful. You know, she gave this gentleman an opportunity to talk about some very meaningful things in his life, and he really didn't go there too much. Um, but what she did by being respectful by not, by containing all those elements of the social conversation, I think she made it easy for the next chaplain. See, the next time someone introduces themselves as a chaplain to this man who, let's face it, is more than likely going to continue to keep coming back to hospital, he's had a very good experience here. He didn't have a chaplain that argued with him. 
He didn't have a chaplain to try to convince him that his image of God was all wrong. She, he had an experience of a chaplain who listened and tried to understand. And I think that will make it easier for the next chaplain. All right, guys, um, here's some questions for you guys. Um, if you have any alternative responses, any alternative opinions, you know what to do. Shoot me an email. Let me stop sharing for the time being. Thanks again for joining me. Until next time, God bless.